I'm Nettie Okorafor, and this is my book, The Binti Trilogy. It's a novella trilogy, and also it's currently in development at Hulu as a TV series, and I'm writing the pilot. <laughs> So, so this book is a book that I didn't know I was going to write until I wrote it. So in, in order to talk about Binti, a science fiction trilogy set in the future, and how it came into being, I'm going to have to talk a little bit about myself. So can you bear with that? Yeah. Is that cool? Because <laughs> it's, a, it's a, a, really personal, um, a really personal story. So I'm the third daughter of four children of a Nigerian immigrant family, two, two uh, parents. And my parents came here in 1969. They came here for medical school and then also graduate school as well. Um, and they planned to go back and use their educations in Nigeria. But then the Biafran War, the Biafran Civil War broke out and that Um, from their parents to cousins, everyone, and they didn't know if anyone was alive. So they ended up staying here in this country, and that's how I was born, you know, that's how my siblings and me were, that's how we were born here. So when the war was over, they were able to reestablish contact with all, of their, with all of their family members. And this is when a lot of things changed for um, my siblings and me. I talk about my siblings and me because my sisters are, I have two older sisters and they're both one year and two years older than me. So basically we're the same age, so we're like one big chunk. <laughs> so I can't really speak only about myself. I have to talk about all of us. And my, my brother, he's seven years younger, but you know, he's, he's probably the chunk too. So, so once they reestablished contact with family, they started taking us back to Nigeria to meet with our relatives, connect with our heritage, and just kind of be in Nigeria. So growing up, so growing up, Nigeria and my heritage became very, very important. Those trips were insane. <laughs> they were just like, they were, they were the kinds of trips where so much would happen with family and just so much drama would happen that you would come back here and you, we just talk, like my siblings, and we'd all just keep talking about it, just talking and talking and talking about it. So it became very, it, it just, those, things, those, those trips really became central to our sense of identity, as well as having a very American experience at the same time. Also, those trips taught us that family was central. So my identity was both American and Nigerian, and a blend of both, that was its own thing. So I grew up hearing all of these stories about being all of these stories about being various kinds of firsts as well. So bear with me, all of this will tie in. All of this is going to tie into what, how, this, how the Binti trilogy was inspired. Um, then there's also education. I'm Igbo, as I said, which is an ethnic group, a Nigerian ethnic group. Both of my parents are Igbo as well. And amongst Igbos, education is super, super important. In my family, no matter what you go into, it doesn't matter if it's medicine, it doesn't matter if it's the arts, even though, well, we're also typical Nigerians where there are four, um, <laughs> four careers, <laughs> which is doctor, engineer, lawyer, and failure. So that's where I come from. <laughs> that's not, I'm not joking. That's not, I'm not joking. But, but in my family, no matter what you go into, you have to earn the highest degree in that thing. Like period, you are, it is, not, it is not a status symbol in my family, it is just an expectation. You aren't praised when you get your PhD, okay? You just, like, that's what you're supposed to do. So it's, it's why I'm a writer with two master's degrees in literature and journalism and a PhD in literature. My parents were all about earning the degrees, but they were also all about learning that learning part. So, when, so when, I went to, when I went to get these graduate degrees, it wasn't just about collecting pieces of paper. It was like the depth of going in and learning something. And this rubbed off on me because I became obsessed with universities, the world of them, the magic and obsession of them. 
once I hit graduate school, once, once I hit graduate school, I, I'd look around and everyone was obsessed, hyper-focused, expert in something very specific, and I love that. And the libraries were a magical place for me. They've always, even, even when I was little, the library, the public library was a magical place. University libraries are full of ghosts and spirits and all kinds of things. You can, you can time travel, you can learn about anything, you can discover the unexpected, you can explore. I, I love libraries. So, Binti. I was always writing something but I also eventually became a professor. One interesting story about that. I didn't realize that I would be, like I was so focused on just the work and getting the degree that I only realized that I would be called doctor the day I graduated. <laughs> like literally. But, so I eventually became a professor. My first professorship was at Chicago State University and I hated it. <laughs> I hated it. It wasn't a place for a practicing writer. Like, they actively tried to squash the creativity out of me, as if my PhD program didn't try to do that. <laughs> then there was like part two. <laughs> so my, but my, immediately, my immediate family and siblings, they're all in the Chicago area. Everyone's close, nobody leaves. Everyone stays together. So I was writing, I was, I was still writing and I was winning literary awards and eventually the University at Buffalo in New York heard about me and made me an offer that I couldn't refuse. Essentially teaching half as many classes, twice as much pay. <laughs> and at a fantastic university. It was a new world. My family didn't react well to this. So when I, when I chose to move to Buffalo, New York, and like I said, I'm very close to my family. My sisters are my best friends. And they essentially disowned me. So I arrived at the University of Buffalo feeling very alone, scared, wondering if I had just made the biggest mistake of my life, just questioning every decision I had made. And that's when I started writing Binti. So Binti is about, and you can really see where this situation inspired this narrative. I literally, I had not planned to write anything at the, at the time. I'm always writing something, but I, it wasn't on contract. It wasn't anything that was expected. I just sat down and just started writing this narrative. Binti is about an African girl who leaves her very insular family, very tribal family, to board a living ship to go to the finest university in the galaxy planets away. That university is 2% human and 99% extraterrestrial. It's the first story that I ever wrote that was set in space because I'm afraid of space. <laughs> I'm afraid of leaving the planet. You die out there. That's the only thing that you're going to do is die out there. And so like, when I, when I was writing this, this story, that was really part of it, that fear. And in kind of looking at that fear, I had done something, I had made this decision to, to leave, and now I'm out there. So I wanted to really kind of explore that, and so that was where the space aspect came in. So that's what led me to write my first, um, first narrative that's in space. And the tw there's a twist in the book in the first novella. Um, I don't want to give too much away, but yeah, there's a twist in the first novella that was really me exploring whether I'd made the mistake of my, the biggest mistake of my life and facing, facing what happens when bad things happen. When you, when you decide to do something big and something bad happens, what do you do? It becomes about Binti, the story becomes about Binti dealing with choices and decisions she's made and how she ended up growing and becoming so much more because of her experiences, positive and negative. And there's a lesson in that. There's always a lesson in there. Binti is very much an immigrant story and it's clear where that came from. I mean, you look at, the, look at what I've grown up around, the stories that I've grown up hearing, it's clear how that worked its way into this, this science fiction narrative as well. But it's also a story about being a student. Binti comes from educated people, but she leaves to pursue a different type of learning. She's changed by her experience, literally. She'll never be the same. 
and she now knows things that no one back home knows. She looks different. She has big, big experiences, yet she loves her family, and she still wants to connect with them. She has to find a way to do that. She does not become something else, she becomes something more. That was one of the biggest themes for me. Wherever she goes, she brings her family with her. She doesn't leave it behind. That was another big one for me, and that's something that my parents, when they left Nigeria, they still brought Nigeria with them, and they still wanted to go back as well, so they've always done that back and forth thing. That was a, that was a, a really important lesson for me to learn. And so this is all at the heart of the series. This speaks to students who might be the first in their families to go to college, Stu students who might want to learn and specialize in something their families may not understand. It speaks to how, experiences, how experience in new worlds changes you and can make returning home strange. It speaks to those students who take enormous steps or might want to take enormous steps into something that they love or are interested in. It speaks to that fish out of water feeling freshmen may have when, the fir when they first arrive at school. I hope that it inspires a love for knowledge and learning as well, because that's also very much at the heart of, of Binti. Binti speaks to what it is to pursue your dreams, to face powerful obstacles, to face your fears, and navigate the twists and the turns. Many may expect this, many may expect this because um, because it's a science fiction story, that it will have spaceships and advanced technology and aliens. and This has all that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely has all that. But it also is about family, culture, sacrifice, and friendship. It's also African futurism, a type of science fiction rooted first and foremost in Africa. So the Binti trilogy is a lot of things just like its main character, Binti. Thank you. <laughs>